So I think this is going to be big. Microsoft just announced the new Copilot function in Excel. And it's gonna fundamentally change what you're able to build with your spreadsheets by bringing the power of AI directly into the grid with formulas. So as a Microsoft MVP, I've had early access to this to try it out. So let's take a look at it. So first up, let's take a look at some simple examples with Copilot. So Copilot only requires a single argument and that's a prompt that you're gonna give Copilot. So let's take a look. Here we're gonna give Copilot this prompt here to list 10 cities. And when we press enter, it's gonna return 10 cities. Now we can change that prompt maybe. So let's list the 10 biggest cities and maybe by population and press enter. And now we've got the 10 biggest cities by population. And maybe we also want to include the population estimate. And then we want that inside some parentheses. Here, let's use Copilot to return a list of states. And in this case, it's gonna give us the state and the population. And here, maybe let's only return the state. So let's tell it to return only the state. And let's press enter. And now we've just got a single array of states. And let's take a look at Copilot with the second argument. So here we're gonna get give it this prompt. Let's give me the capital city for each state. And then we can supply it with some context. And in this case, it's gonna be a list of 10 of our states here. And this way, Copilot is gonna return the capital city for each of those states. In this example, we're gonna use Copilot for some text sentiment analysis. So here we've got some reviews, and then we're gonna see if Copilot can tell us if these reviews are negative, neutral, or positive. So here we're gonna tell Copilot to tell us if the re review is negative, neutral, or positive. And then we're gonna give it the list of reviews. And there we go. Copilot returns an array of values, so positive, negative, or neutral, depending on the review. And maybe we want this as an emoji, so here we can adjust our prompt and press enter, and now we've got a corresponding emoji. Next up, we're gonna use Copilot to categorize text. So here we've got a list of Excel topics, and then we've got a list of potential categories that those might get labeled as. And so this would be something that previously was impossible using Excel functions, but this is gonna be the perfect use case for something like Copilot. So here we're gonna tell Copilot to categorize our Excel topics and then we're gonna give it the list of topics to categorize. And then next we're gonna say, based on these categories, and then supply our list of categories. And when we press enter, there we go, we've got our Excel topics categorized now. In this next example, we're gonna use Copilot to get some restaurant suggestions. So here we've got input for a city and a type of meal. So we can choose one of those. And then here we're gonna create a prompt based on those two inputs. And so here you can see it just says, give me a list of the 10 best restaurants for brunch in New York. And then at the end, it just says, return these values for each restaurant and the values we're gonna return are these ones here. So let's use Copilot to do that. And so here we're gonna give it our prompt. 
and the values that we're going to return are going to be in these column headings here. And let's press enter. And there we go, we've got a list of restaurants along with what type of cuisine it is, the neighborhood, and what kind of budget you need, the rating, and the must try dish. Let's try editing this. And so here now our must try dish includes the price inside parentheses. And because we set these up with parameters, we can change them. And we get different results. Let's go for dinner. And there we go. Now we've got different suggestions for dinner in Miami. In this example, we're going to do something similar with TV and movie suggestions. So here we've got an input for TV shows or movies. And then we have an input for what we feel like watching. And then we're going to build our prompt based on those two inputs. And again, at the end, we're going to say that we want to return these values for each. And so the values we're going to return are listed here. So let's use Copilot to do that. So here we're going to get our prompt and we're going to return these values here. And when we press enter, then we get our suggested movies. So here's our movie title, the actor, plot summary, the genre and rating. And here we've got a custom Lambda function that's unrelated to Copilot, but it's going to call the movie poster based on the title from the Open Movie Database API. And because we set these up as inputs, we can change our prompt here. So here, let's try getting something funny with aliens. And here's our suggestions now. And we can look for TV shows as well. And there we go, we've got our suggestions for TV shows that are funny and have aliens in them. In this example, we're gonna use Copilot to generate random data. So if you're learning Excel or you're building things in Excel, a common use case is gonna be needing to acquire data for either practice or testing. And with Copilot, we're going to be able to easily generate our own random data for testing. So here we've got two inputs. We've just got a number of rows. And then we've got the type of data that we want. And then we're going to build out our prompt with those two. So here we're going to get 10 rows of random data. And we want employment data for Santa's Toy Factory. And then at the end here, we also say that it should should include the following fields. And then we're going to get those fields from this table here. And our second prompt, we're going to say we want the output of these fields to follow the formatting that's going to be here. So let's use Copilot to get that. So here we're going to give it our first prompt. And the fields that we want are listed here in our table. And then our second prompt, we're going to ask for those fields to be in a certain format. And the format is going to be given here in this table field here. And when we press enter, there we go. We've got our employee ID, full name, and you can see that it's in the format last name, first name. And then we've got our job title, and we've described that as all capitals. And then we've got an hourly salary here, and we've got our employee start date in our given format. Now we can change this around. So let's say we want our last name in all caps. Let's try that out. And there we go, we've got our list of full names and the last name there is all caps. Maybe we want an annual salary instead of an hourly. And now our data has an annual salary. 
And here maybe we want to change our date format. So instead of 1st of July, we want that to say July 1st. And our data output updates accordingly. And here we've got an extra field, so we can add that to our table. And there we go, we've got that as an extra field in our output. Here we've got 10 rows, let's get 20 instead. And there we go, we've got 20 rows of random data for our testing purposes now. In this example, we're going to use Copilot to get fuzzy match results. So here we've got a list of names and email addresses. And then here we've got a list of similar names, but there are no exact matches. So we can't use something like XLOOKUP to return the email address. So here we're going to use Copilot to get those matches for us. So here we've got two prompts set up. One just says, give me the best match to these names. And the other says, from these names. So here we're going to use our copilot function with our first prompt. And here we're going to give it our list of names that we're trying to match. And then our second prompt is for these names. And then our full list of names here. And when we press enter, you can see that we've got our fuzzy matched results based on similar names. So here we've got John Smith, and it's found us Jonathan Smith from our list here. And of course, once we've got those names, then we can use them with something like XLOOKUP to return the email address. In this example, we're going to use Copilot to split out some names for us. So here we've got a list of names and you can see they're quite complicated and how they're formatted. So some have prefixes, some have suffixes. We've got first, middle and last names. And so this is something that would have been fairly hard to do with Excel formulas, but it's going to be quite easy with Copilot. So here we've got two prompts. One just says to split the names into their components. And the other says to return these items for each name. So let's use Copilot to split these out. So we're going to give it our first prompt. And we're going to split these names here. And then our second prompt is to return these items here. And when we press enter, Copilot returns those names split out into their prefix, suffix, first name, middle name or initial, and last name. And we've also even got a description of how the name was formatted. In this example, we're going to use Copilot to extract names from some text values. So here we've got some sentences and you can see that Throughout those sentences, we've got some names. So either first name or first and last name. And this is another thing that would have been impossible with regular Excel functions. So if we were trying to extract something like an email address or a date, those conform to various patterns. And because of that, we could use something like regex extract to extract those values. But here we're trying to extract names and because those don't have a particular pattern, we're not going to be able to use our regex functions. But with Copilot, this is also going to be fairly easy. So here we've got some prompts set up. So our first prompt is going to be to extract only the names from these sentences. And our second prompt is going to be to return these items. So let's use Copilot to extract our names. So here we're going to give it our first prompt and our list of sentences and our second prompt to return these items and then the items that we want to return. And when we press enter, there we go. We've got our first names 
And then if it exists, we've also got a last name extracted. In this example, we're gonna use Copilot to convert JSON values to a table. So here we've got in a single cell, some JSON data. And we're gonna use this prompt, simple prompt to convert that into a table. So here, let's use Copilot and give it our prompt. And for our context, we're just gonna pass it the single JSON data cell. And when we press enter, there we go. We've got all of that data converted into a table format. In our last example, we're gonna use Copilot to explain a formula. So here we've got a formula and what it's doing is taking a list of comma separated values and then reordering them in either ascending or descending order. So the prompt we're gonna use for Copilot is to explain how this formula works step by step. So let's see if we can get Copilot to explain our formula. So let's use Copilot with this prompt. And the context we're gonna feed it is not this cell, but we're gonna use the formula text function to get the formula from that cell and use that as the context for Copilot. And when we press enter, then we've now got a step-by-step -step explanation. So if we go up to the home tab and just wrap that text, then we're gonna see our step-by-step -step explanation for our formula. So there you go, that's the Copilot function in Excel. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this gonna be something that's gonna be useful for you? What kind of things are you gonna be able to build with the Copilot function? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. And we'll see you in the next one.